always does. <laughs> it's good. Wait for baloney to take some time. Johnny, you and I, and June too, we had a very dear friend who's not with us anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd like to sing a song of his. I don't know if you know. You're talking that's, about that's Pete right. Lafarge. Pete Lafarge, Indian, and proud of it. I am too. The, you're part Indian? I'm proud of, of Peter. Yes, I'm part Cherokee. No fooling. Yeah. Peter was Hopi, I understand, full blood Hopi. Hmm. Well, Pete came to New York. I met him about four or five years ago. He helped me build a chimney back at our house. You told we, me about it. We that. saw the yeah. chimney. <laughs> great big stone. I thought it was going to break through the floor before we got it up. Yeah. He was a great man. Well, he was, he ha he was a very thoughtful guy. Mm -hmm. And I, I think in many ways, one of the most thoughtful people I ever <coughs> knew. He told me how uh, Indian people had a feeling for the world and nature that he found missing in a lot of city people. Told me about the little coyote, for example, that as far as the ranchers were concerned, they just wanted to poison him out of existence. Yeah. But the Indian's name for the coyote was Little Brother, and he had a song about it. Coyote, coyote. What have they done? My little brother, where do you run? They've poisoned the maize. They've poisoned the plain. My little brother, the coyote, won't come back again. You can hear them calling the few that are left. He's warning the human race of his death. He said, don't poison Mazes. Don't poison the spleen. There'll be no one to listen. There'll be no one to sing. Never and never. Will there be spring? Coyote, coyote, what have they done? a song uh, you get out of those flat plains you know in 57 I wrote a, a song called old Apache squaw and then forgot the Indian so-called protest uh, for a while um, nobody else uh, seemed to speak up with uh, any volume of voice uh, then not long before I met Peter I wrote a thing called Apache tears you know the stone out west and uh, the souvenir shops uh, that they that they smooth in a tumbler, the in Arizona especially, yeah. it's a uh, it's black. It looks like a tear. I wrote a song called Apache Tears, and I wrote one called The Ballad of the Talking Leaves, the story of the creation of the Cherokee alphabet. Hey, no fooling. I want to learn that. And well, I'll give you seven hundred thousand copies of it. Uh, anyway, I just read about Sequoia a few weeks ago. Did you? A tremendous guy without. Any formal education, he decided that 
that the Cherokees should have their own written language, uh, that they had to organize themselves if they were going to withstand the encroaching settlers. In my album, there's a, there's a little story that tells how he came to do this. He was 15 years old. He was following his father across a battlefield where they had been fighting the white man. And some officer's notebook had scattered in the wind the pages. And Sequoia had never seen paper. Never. Never seen printed word in paper. And he picked them up as he went along, and he ran up to his father and said, what is this, father, the, uh, these strange squares with such beautiful bird track marks on them? He said, not even the owl could put these there. And his father grabbed them from him and said, that's the white man's talking leaves. And he said, talking leaves, what do you mean? He said, just forget it. Well, he followed him, finally got it out of him. He said, that is how they communicate. They make bird track marks on these snow white leaves, and they send it to their brother. And his brother knows what's in his heart or what he's thinking. So I wrote the thing about um, about uh, Sequoia made up the Cherokee right. alphabet, mm -hmm. which is, as you know, the most complicated alphabet in, I suppose, in the history of the world. Something like seventy eight. At letters. the same time, it was so simple for mm -hmm. Cherokees that within a few weeks, a Cherokee uh, boy could be writing letters to his own family. That's what I understood, that within three years, the entire Cherokee nation was reading and writing. Right, because, I mean, they were, they were a great, a noble race. And they said, the white man can talk on leaves, why not the Cherokee? And they, they studied it, they were, it was pounded into their heads, they wanted to learn it, and they did. And there's a newspaper published now in Phoenix, in Cherokee. Johnny, just a minute, I want you to sing one of these songs, but, uh, either one of yours or the one that Pete wrote, telling the story of the American Indian people, okay? Yes, Peter Lafarge was an Indian who loved his heritage, his country, and most of all, well, not most of all, but he did love his music, and he used it not as a, as a vicious tool, but as a, as a great, as a, well, a voice for the American Indian. And we were very proud that he came down from New York City and brought us five songs to do in this Bitter Tears album of uh, protest songs for the American Indian, which I think was long overdue. Here's our favorite. June, would you have me on this one? Sure, me too. You don't our favorite uh, Peter course. Lafarge Indian song. As long as, long as, the, moon as the moon shall rise, as, the moon shall rise. As, long as long as the river, as the river flows, as the river flows. As long as the sun will shine. The Seneca is an Indian tribe of the Iroquois Nation. Down on the New York-Pennsylvania line, you'll find their reservation. After the U.S. Revolution, Corn Platter was a chief. He told his tribe these men you can trust. That was his true belief. Well, they went down to Independence Hall, and there a treaty signed that promised peace with the USA and Indian rights combined. George Washington gave his signature. The government gave its hand. They said that now and forevermore that this is Indian land as long as, long as, the, moon as the moon shall rise. As the moon shall rise.
as long as the grass shall grow. But on the Seneca Reservation, there is much sadness now. Washington's treaty has been broken, and there is no hope, no how. All across the Allegheny River, they're throwing up a dam. It will flood the Indian country, a proud day for Uncle Sam. But it broke that ancient treaty with a politician's grin. It will drown the Indian graveyards. Corn planter, can you swim? Earth is mother to the Seneca, so they're trampling sacred ground. Change the mint green earth to black mud flats as honor hobbles down as long as the moon shall rise. As long as the river flows. As long as the sun Johnny and June, I'm mighty glad that America has people like you traveling around, flying around. I know you keep on the run more than almost anybody I know. Every time I see you, you're just kind of zipping through. Uh, let me sing a song for you both yeah. as, you, as you fly around. favorite old banjo tunes. I don't know if you've heard it before. Hey, after, after you do this one, would you do me a, a special request? So we came to New York to, uh, just to get you to do the special request. Right. Would you play just a little bit of Cripple Creek on the fretless banjo? <laughs> All right. Go right I ahead, Pete. cotton for so many years that uh, uh, that's a different lick picking cotton. Isn't it? <laughs> you want me to do something on the fretless banjo? Yeah, if you don't mind, I'd love to hear you. Yeah. Well, this is the banjo you gave me. Bob Johnson gave it to you and you brought it up to me. And uh, uh, 1855. That's, uh, that's older than June. <laughs> I'm 
afraid it's a, it's right in between the frets. Uh, how many more minutes do we have, Mr. Man? Four minutes more. Four minutes. You got about. I want June to sing a song. Oh, I'm yeah. thinking tonight of my blue eyes. That's beautiful. Uh, I've never sung it as many times as the Carter family did, but I'd try it for you, Pete, if you wanted to. <coughs> Might say this song doesn't happen about two or three verses, but it's a lot of fun to sing. It's a lot of fun to harmonize on to any of you out there. You know, the, the main reason for this Rainbow Crest show is not just to show what we can do, but show you how you can have a lot of fun yourself making music. And I, I mean it. I hope that you all out there, young or old, tall or short, fat or thin, quick or slow, no matter what kind of color or shape or person you are, if you like to make music, why, uh, go ahead. Don't let the microphones and loudspeakers phase you. Take some of your off. <laughs> 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 and this would be a good song to try if you want to. Let's see if you got a, a D chord there because your D. Um, I have a small one. It comes I'm out the same as your C. <laughs> and uh, let me see Pete? if I wait till I get in gear I here. I thought it was a D flat, but you gave me a D and I just flattened it myself. Mother Maybell, she'd stop in tune if the world come to an end. It's the only thing but to do. But what she does get in tune, she <laughs> plays it. strand 
of rainbow design of rainbow design in it i'd weave the bravery of women giving birth in it i'd weave the innocence of children over all the earth children Magic band to every city, through every single land, through every land. Show my brothers and my sisters my rain.